Hello friends, good afternoon and welcome to Erosite Live Lectures. Dear friends, as you know that we have started a series on polynuclear hydrocarbons and heterocyclic compounds and today we are conducting yet another lecture in the same series. In today's lecture we will try to understand pyrimidines which are also a kind of heterocyclic compound. We will try to understand uh, their preparation, properties and characteristics. We will also have a discussion on the derivatives as well. To discuss this topic, we have with us our subject expert, Dr. Sushila Senghal. Dr. Senghal is Assistant Professor in Department of Chemistry in Deshbandhu College, University of Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome ma'am to our studios and request her to start the lecture. Welcome ma'am. Thank you Ambiji. Good day viewers. Today in the series of polynuclear aromatic compounds and heterocyclic compounds, we will discuss about pyrimidine. This pyrimidine is generally studied in combination with the purines which we have already discussed in the last lecture. These are studied together because these both are the hydrolytic products of nucleic acids which are present in the nucleoproteins. In these nucleoproteins, nucleic acids are the prosthetic groups and proteins are mainly protamines and histones. In the last lecture, in the purines, we have discussed that purines are the fused ring structure of pyrimidine and imidazole ring. So, pyrimidine itself are present in the purines and they are studied separately also. So, in today's lecture, we will first discuss about the pyrimidine introduction, its occurrence in nature. These are not uh, present naturally in the um, in the atmo atmosphere or in the natural products, but these are present as their derivatives. Further, we will do the preparation of pyrimidines in which we will discuss about the uh, synthetic methods from um, ethyl malonate, from uh, decarboxylation methods, from Whittaker synthesis, etc. Then we will do the preparation uh, properties of pyrimidines in the in the properties we will discuss about that how this pyrimidine reacts with the electrophiles with the different nucleophiles and with the oxidizing agents for uh, further discussion we will discuss about the pyrimidine derivatives in which we will study barbituric acid synthesis of its bar barbituric acid and structure determination of barbituric acid in the second module we will discuss barbituric acid derivatives in which we will discuss the main compounds which were, which of uh, one of them is uracil thiamine and cytosine then we will discuss about some biologically active compounds in which pyrimidine nucleus is present so first of all we will discuss about the pyrimidine these pyrimidines are the crystalline compounds since these are crystalline compounds they melts at a sharp melting point 22.5 degree centigrade. These are aromatic heterocyclic organic compound and these are similar to pyridine molecule. Here you can see this is the ball stick model of pyrimidine and this is the Fischer projection of pyrimidine in which numbering is starting from the nitrogen. This is the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. These blue balls are nitrogen balls. In case of pyridine, we are having the 6 member heterocyclic compound with only one nitrogen atom. But in the pyrimidine, we are having the nitro 2 nitrogen atom in the same ring. So, these are also called as diazines and for diazines, we are having 3 isomers in which the position of these nitrogen is different. These may be present at 1, 2 position, these may be present at 1, 3 position and also present at 1, 4 position. The isomer in which we are having nitrogen, two different nitrogen at 1 and 3 position is called pyrimidine ring. This pyrimidine is a symmetrical molecule in which if we pass a line through C2 and C5, we pass a line through here C2 and C5, then the first half is similar to the second half. It means the carbon number C4 and C6 are equivalent and the nitrogen N3 
and N1 are equivalent. So, it is a symmetrical molecule. When a hydroxy or amino group is present at position 2, 4 or 6, then they are tautomeric with oxo and amino, res amino derivatives respectively as shown in the reaction. This is the hydroxy derivative in which this enol form is present which is tautomeric to the second structure and this further tautomeric to the lactam form. There are, there are 8 possible partially hydrogenated pyrimidines although it is not certain that all of them are stable to be isolated. Further, the occurrence of pyrimidine, the pyrimidine ring system has wide occurrence in nature as they are substituted and ring fused compounds and derivatives including the nucleotides, thiamine which is also called as vitamin B1 and alexon. Pyrimidine is also found in many synthetic compounds such as barbituric acid which is also called as 246 trihydroxypyrimidine and its several derivatives for example vironal which is used as hypnotics. Pyrimidine is also found in HIV drug, one of them is zidovudine. Many anti-malarial and antibacterial drugs also contain pyrimidine rings. Here we have shown the two derivatives, one of them is barbutyric acid and one is vironal. Both of these are having the pyrimidine nucleus. Now comes the synthetic methods of pyrimidine, one of them is from malonic ester. Pyrimidine can be prepared from the condensation between the malonic ester, this is the malonic ester and urea. In the presence of a base, we have taken here sodium ethoxide to yield barbituric acid. This is the barbituric acid that is 246 trihydroxypyrimidine which is tautomeric to this keto structure. Then this barbituric acid further on heating with water containing zinc dust will yield us pyrimidine. First of all these hydroxy group will be substituted by the chloro by reaction with phosphoryl chloride. These all three hydroxy group will be substituted by the three chloro group. Then this will undergo reaction with the boiling water to give us the pyrimidine. Urea may be replaced by amidine guanidine and thiourea and condensed with a 1,4 diketone. For the 1,4 diketone we have taken here acetyl acetone. This is the acetyl part, this is the acetone. It can further react with amidine in the presence of base and water will go out so that the condensation reaction will take place and we will get here a intermediate product which after rearrangement and losing of water will give us the substituted pyrimidine. Further pyrimidine can be prepared from ethyl crotonate. This is the ethyl crotonate. Ethyl crotonate on condensation with urea or amidine with unsaturated compounds in the presence of a base again water will go out and we will get, get a product which is unstable and which immediately will lose the ethanol will and will undergo cyclization and will form a dihydropyrimidine. This is the initial product which will then readily oxidized in the presence of bromine to give the corresponding pyrimidine. Here we have taken the ethyl crotonate and this methyl as a substituent in the unsaturated compound. So, we will get here the methyl substituted pyrimidine. Pyrimidine can also be prepared from acetophenone. This is the acetophenone. Formamide reacts with compounds containing active methylene groups in a way to form beta amino ketones. With excess formamide, the beta amino ketones will cyclize to give us pyrimidine. Acetophenone for instance will react with formamide, this is the formamide to yield 4-phenyl pyrimidine. First this formamide will react with acetophenone which is having the active methylene compound and will condense together, water will go out as a side product 
and it will rearrange itself to give us a cyclized product which is a 4-phenylpyrimidine. Further, pyrimidine can be prepared from decarboxylation method. Pyridine itself can be obtained by the decarboxylation of pyrimidine 4,6-dicarboxylic acid. Here in the pyrimidine nucleus, we are having the two carboxylic acid groups. These on heating in the presence of calcium oxide will lose the molecule of carbon dioxide. Two molecules of carbon dioxide will be lost and we will get here a pure pyrimidine molecule. Further, this pyrimidine can be prepared from Whittaker method. In the Whittaker method, there is a catalytic reduction of a reduction followed by dechlorination of 2,4-dichloropyrimidine by heating with hydrogen under pressure in the presence of palladium charcoal and magnesium oxide. And here, dehalogenation will take place. Here in this case, we have taken chloro, dichloropyrimidine. So, dechlorination will take place and we will get here a pyrimidine nucleus. Further, this pyrimidine can be prepared from alpha beta unsaturated ketones. These alpha beta unsaturated ketones react with amidine to yield pyrimidine. The initial product is probably a dihydropyrimidine which is readily oxidized by a stream of air to the corresponding pyrimidine. For the alpha beta unsaturated ketones, we have taken here the beta benzoyl styrene. This is the beta benzoyl styrene. It will react with benzamidine and will condense together lose, with losing the molecule of water. Will first give dihydropyrimidine. This is a substituted dihydropyrimidine which on oxidation with air will oxidize and we will finally will give us triphenylpyrimidine molecule. Pyrimidine can also be prepared from Enroch reaction. Now what is this Enroch reaction? This Enroch word itself is addition of nucleophile, ring opening and ring closer in a same reaction. So pyrimidine derivatives can be obtained from halogen carrying pyrimidines by this Enroch reaction. This is the reaction in which we are having substituted pyridine which on reaction with amide first form a intermediate which will rearrange itself like first this addition of nucleophile then there is a ring opening and in the last step after ring opening it will rearrange in the, in the ring closer reaction and we will get here the substituted pyrid pyrimidine. A nucleophile attacks the carbon atom not carrying halogen although it although we are taking here the uh, halogen derivative of pyri pyridine but this nucleophile is not attacking on that carbon which is having the halogen it is attacking on a different carbon followed by electrocyclic ring opening finally the intermediate this intermediate will cyclize which own aromatization will form the 6-alkyl pyrimidine. So this was all about the preparation part of pyrimidine. Now comes the properties of pyrimidine. Pyrimidine is a neutral in solution but still it forms salts with acids. It is because of the nitrogen atoms present in the ring. It is a resonance hybrid of following four structures. These are the resonating structures. In the first structure, we are having three double bond with the nit two nitrogen atom. Then this, this first bond which is present in the nitrogen number 1 and the C2 carbon will polarize to give us charges in the molecule which will delocalize further in the next and the next resonating structures. The resonance of pyridine, pyrimidine molecule indicates that in pyrimidine position 5 has the greatest electron density but attack by electrophilic reagent is difficult as expected. Since the pyrimidine ring is whole ring is deactivated due to the presence of two nitrogen atom in the same ring as nitrogen atom are electron withdrawing atoms. Then comes the chemical properties of pyrimidine. First of all, first of them is reaction with acids. Pyrimidine is much weaker base 
with a pKa value of 1.30 then pyrimidine then pyridine which is having a pKa value of 8.8 .8. the reason is that the cation formed by protonation at one nitrogen gets destabilized due to the electron withdrawing inductive effect of the second nitrogen pyrimidine though a weak base but still it can be protonated in the presence of acids although it is having two nitrogens so diprotonation should be there diprotonation is possible in this compound because nitrogen atoms are not present in adjacent positions as in case of uh, different isomer of this uh, uh, six membered diazine which is called as pyridazine but it takes place in strong acids in substituted pyrimidines electron releasing groups like methyl and methoxy these increases its basic character since this methyl and the methoxy group they are electron releasing group and they increases the electron density on the pyrimidine ring which will allow it to release this electron pair and which will increase its basic character then comes the electrophilic substitution pyrimidine is resistant to electrophilic substitution the attack at position 2 4 and 6 is particularly retarded because of the electron deficiency at these positions but still electrophilic substitution is possible which is at position 5 and halogenation takes place we have already said that the carbon number 5 is having a little bit high electron uh, rich position so electrophilic substitution takes place at this c5 position bromination of pyrimidine is 5 bromopyrimidine when it is treated with bromine in nitrobenzene this is the pyrimidine molecule which on reaction with nitrobenzene in the presence of bromine at 130 degree centigrade will give us 5 bromopyrimidine here the electrophilic substitution is taking place at fifth carbon Pyrimidine also forms mono quaternary salts on reaction with alkyl halides at room temperature. This is the pyrimidine. It, this pyrimidine at room temperature on reaction with methyl iodide and meth methanol, it will give us quaternary salt. Di quaternary salt, however, are obtained when they are treated with more reactive reagents like triethyl oxonium borofluoride. In this case, the second nitrogen this second nitrogen will also form a salt and it will be a diquaternary salt. Further, these pyrimidine also reacts with nucleophilic reagents. The attack of a nucleophile takes place easily on the pyrimidine ring, similar to pyridine, quinoline and isoquinoline. The susceptible positions for the attack of nucleophile is 2, 4 and 6. Pyrimidine is stable in cold alkali, but in boiling hydrazine, it rearranges to pyrazole. These pyrimidine, this pyrimidine nucleus, when it reacts with aqueous hydrazine, this hydrazine will attack as a nucleophile. Here, nucleophilic attack will take place, and after hydrolysis, first the ring opening will take place, and we will get here a rearranged product. These three uh, these, these, these three structures are little bit unstable which in the last step will undergo rearrangement to give us pyrazole. Here we, you can see that the six membered pyridine, pyridine has been converted into a five membered structure which is a pyrazole. Grignard and the organolithium reagents reacts adly to the 3-4 bond of pyrimidine at room temperature. The intermediate on hydrolysis and subsequent oxidation of a dihydropyrimidine with potassium permanganate in acetone yields 4-phenylpyrimidine. Here this is the pyrimidine nucleus which on reaction with Grignard reagent, this is the phenyl magnesium bromide, a Grignard reagent which adds on the molecule which is as a nucleophilic attack will further undergo hydrolysis as you know that uh, in the first step Grignard reagent ad adds on to the molecule and then immediately it undergoes hydrolysis 
it will undergo hydrolysis to give this product which on oxidation will give us the 4 phenyl pyrimidine. Methyl groups in the 2, 4 and the 6 position of pyrimidine behaves as active methylene, methylene groups and can be converted to styrene derivatives by condensation with benzaldehyde or para diamino dimethyl amino benzaldehyde. There is however an increased acidity of the methyl group at the position 2 because of the electron withdrawing effect of the nitrogen atom which are present at the, carb at the position number 1 and the 3 and here we will get this product. Pyrimidine reacts with sodamide in liquid ammonia to give a sodium salt it is a kind of chichibabin reaction in which this pyrimidine react with sodamide in the presence of liquid ammonia and aromatization is of which is not possible although in the chichibabin reaction we will get here the amino product but here in this case aromatization is not possible and we will get a product which is having the uh, ionic, ionic uh, uh, atoms. Further aqueous sodium hydroxide also add on to pyrimidine it directly adds on to give us the hydro derivative of pyrimidine. Pyrimidine also reacts with oxidizing agents. It gives a low yield of an oxide on oxidation with a per acid. The ring is largely destroyed during an oxide formation. But the alkyl pyrimidines give a satisfactory yield of an oxides. This is the 4 methyl pyrimidine. It reacts with hydrogen peroxide and it yields 4 methyl pyrimidine and oxide. This can be converted back to pyrimidine by refluxing with phosphorus oxychloride. Result addition reaction also appears in pyrimidine and oxides. 4 methoxy pyrimidine and oxide on reaction with sodium cyanide and benzoyl chloride, it undergoes L it furnishes the reaction to give us 2 cyanomethoxy pyrimidine. First the, the this cyano will attack as a nucleophile on the pyrimidine ring and it will rearrange then to give us the 2 cyano 4 methoxy pyrimidine as the final product. Further this pyrimidine also undergoes thioclasin rearrangement. These certainly suitable substituted thiopyrimidines undergo the familiar thioclasin rearrangement thus 3 methyl 4 allyl thiopyrimidine 2 on it on heating will yield 5 allyl 4 thiouracil. So, these were all about the properties of pyrimidine. Now comes the pyrimidine derivatives one of them is barbituric acid. So, first of all we will do the preparation of this barbituric acid. It is prepared by a condensation method which involves a condensation of urea with the malonic ester in the presence of phosphoryl chloride. Here a mole two molecules of water will go as a side product and it will give us a condensed product which is called as barbituric acid. However, a more convenient synthetic method is also there in which we will take the substituted malonic ester which is diethyl malonate. Here this is the dimethyl malonate. It will also undergo condensation with the urea in the presence of sodium ethoxide. Here ethanol will go out as a side product and we will get here the barbituric acid. Alkyl or dialkyl derivatives of barbituric acid are also prepared by using mono or di substituted diethyl malonate. Then comes the properties of barbituric acid. It is a crystalline solid so it is having a sharp melting point which is 253 degree centigrade and is sparingly soluble in water. Due to enolization it exhibits lectum and lectin totomerism. It is regarded as 246 trihydroxypyrimidine. So these are the four resonating structures of barbituric acid. One of them is which is having the ketonic groups, three ketonic groups are there. In the second for the first ketonic group will undergo hydrogen shift to make it hydroxy which is enol first one enol then in the second structure two of the ketonic group will undergo hydrogen shift to give us the two hydroxy group 
and in the final fourth structure we will get here the all three keto groups will undergo hydrogen shift to give us a three hydroxy pyrimidine structure. So, out of these structure which structure is more probable for the barbituric acid? It is difficult to assimilate the uh, hydroxy structures which, which is uh, the structure second, third and fourth. So, this suggests that the structure number one is more probable. It is on the basis of some observation. One of them is that barbituric acid it forms oximino derivative with nitrous acid indicating the presence of an active methylene group. Further, methylation of this hydroxypyrimidine with methyl iodide in the presence of alkali gives the N-methyl derivative indicating the presence of imido group. The X-ray analysis indicates that the, that the structure 1 is the predominant form in the solid state though the molecule is planar. Further, this barbituric acid it lacks the aromatic character and can be hydrolyzed to urea and malonic ester. And if we take it's the trihydroxypyrimidine, then in the trihydroxypyrimidine you can see that three double bonds are there and the molecule is aromatic. While if we we can say that this barbituric acid it lacks the aromatic character, so the structure one is more probable for the barbituric acid. This barbituric acid can be alkylated at the position number five. Some of these derivatives are medicinally important compounds. Thus, 5,5-diethyl barbituric acid which is also known as vinonal is a hypnotic and is obtained as follows. You can see in the reaction that it, the diethyl, ethyl malonate it undergoes reaction with urea will undergo condensation in the presence of sodium ethoxide we will, will give us a biologically active compound vinonal. This vinonal is acts as a hypnotic. So, this was uh, about the barbituric structure. Thank you. Now after the structure of barbituric acid, we will discuss about the barbituric derivatives. One of them is vyluric acid. This vyluric acid is 5-oximino barbituric acid. This can be obtained by treatment of barbituric acid with nitrous acid. In this case, this barbituric acid on reaction with nitrous acid will first form the oxime which will rearrange to give us 5-oximino barbituric acid and this product is also called as vyluric acid. Then comes the deleteric acid. This is also a barbituric derivative. It is 5-nitro barbituric acid. Since it is 5-nitro, so nitration is done on the barbituric acid in the presence of nitrating mixture with the fuming nitric acid. And by the oxidation of the vyluric acid, we can also prepare deleteric acid. So, from the barbituric acid itself and from its previous derivative from both of these structures we can prepare deleteric acid which is 5-nitro barbituric acid. The next derivative is uramyl. This uramyl is 5-amino barbituric acid and is obtained by reduction of deleteric acid or vyluric acid. Here you can say that this is the uramyl structure in which we are having the amino group at the fifth carbon. This can be prepared from vyloric acid and from the deleteric acid by the reduction methods. It can also be obtained by the action of ammonium hydrogen sulphide on alexon which we have discussed in the purines lecture. We have discussed all about its structure, its properties. So, 
this uramyl can be prepared from this alexon first of all we will get here the thionuric acid which on heating in the presence of water will give us uramyl then comes a dialuric acid it is 5 hydroxy barbituric acid and is obtained by the action of nitrous acid on uramyl also reduction of alexon will give us the dialuric acid you can see here this is the uramyl which is the 5 amino barbituric acid first of all it will react with the nitrous acid to give us the hydroxy derivative which is a dialuric acid it will undergo rearrangement here this will undergo hydrogen shift to give us a dihydroxy derivative which is called the dialuric acid it can also be prepared from the alexon itself in the presence of water then comes the alexon which is the methyl oxyl urea it is also obtained from the barbituric acid as this is the barbituric acid it first undergo reaction with the benzaldehyde to form a benzoyl derivative which on oxidation with chromic acid in the presence of acetic acid will give us alexon monohydrate this monohydrate on heating will lose water to give alexon we can prepare this alexon directly from barbituric acid by its oxidation in the presence of nitric acid so it can be prepared via these two steps this alexon is acidic in nature and it forms salt the central carbonyl group is very active and it behaves like a ketone thus it forms ketonic uh, derivatives or it uh, will give the reactions of ketone one of them is a bisulfite derivative as you know that ketones on reaction with bisulfite gives a addition product so this alexon will also undergo reaction with the sodium bisulfite and will give us the alexon bisulfite ketones also reacts with hydroxyl amine to give us oxime so here also alexon will react with hydroxyl amine to give us the bialuric acid which is a oxime derivative of alexon further on reduction it gives dialuric acid and allantoin under different conditions if we react this alexon in the presence of zinc in the acidic medium with the hydrochloric acid it will first form the 5 hydroxy barbituric acid which will rearrange will form its isomer which is the bialuric acid it allantoin a different structure which is a complex of this is the two uh, rings which are fused together it is a complex of alexon and dialuric acid it can be prepared from alexon on reaction with hydrogen sulfide then the next derivative of barbituric acid is uracil uracil is naturally occurring pyrimidine derivative this is the uracil structure it is 2,4 dioxypyrimidine it is a planar unsaturated compound and it has the ability to absorb light this uracil is one of the four nucleobases present in rna the others are adenine cytosine and guanine in rna this uracil base pairs with adenine and replaces thiamine during dna transcription now comes a synthetic method of this important nucleobase which is uracil one of the simplest synthesis involves adding water to cytosine on addition of water to cytosine we will get here the uracil and ammonia will go out as a vapors and we will get here the pure uracil then this uracil can be synthesized by condensation of malic acid with urea in the presence of sulfuric acid sulfuric acid will act here as a condensing reagent and will condense malic acid and urea and will give us a cyclic product which is called uracil in this reaction this uracil can be prepared from fischer and roder synthesis in the fischer and the roder synthesis urea condenses with ethyl acrylate at 210 degree centigrade here you can see that this is the ethyl acrylate moiety it reacts with urea first the, this um, amino group of urea will attack on the ethyl acrylate uh, double bond this is, uh, unsaturated part of this ethyl acrylate and will give us a cyclized product which is dihydrouracil this dihydrouracil 
<coughs> then will undergo bromination and the bromo product formed will when will boiled in presence of pyrimidine then hbr will go as a side product and we will get here a double bond this double bond then will undergo rearrangement uh, the what uh, the hydrogen shift will take place in this uh, molecule and we will get here the uracil as the final product the most important synthesis of uracil is wheeler and the liddell synthesis it involves the condensation of thiourea with sodioformyl acetic ester this is the sodioformyl acetic acid uh, ester this on condensation with thiourea followed by heating with aqueous chloroacetic acid will give us the uracil first of all these two moieties will condense together and will give us a cyclized product which on reaction with chloroacetic acid will give us the final product that is uracil uracil can also be prepared from davidson et al synthesis it consists in treating the malic acid with sulfuric acid and we will get here a intermediate product in which carbon monoxide and water will go as a side product and this intermediate product first will rearrange to give us beta aldopropanoic acid this beta uh, aldopropanoic acid then will react with urea this is a rearrangement uh, product of malic acid which will further react with urea and will undergo condensation to give us the uracil then comes the properties of uracil methylation of uracil will give us a thiamine which is its methyl derivative in dna the substitution of uracil for thiamine increases the stability of dna and improves the efficiency of dna replication dna uh, sorry uracil base pairs with adenine through two hydrogen bonds here you can see that this is the hydrogen bonding between the uracil moiety and this is the adenine moiety and this is the uh, nitrogen of uracil which undergoes hydrogen bonding with the nitrogen of the pyrimidine ring of the adenine and this keto group of uracil will undergo hydrogen bonding with the amino group of the adenine so there are two hydrogen bonds in the uracil and the adenine which makes the dna more stable in rna uracil forms uridine a nucleoside when it is attached to a sugar a pentose sugar which is d ribose it forms uridine triphosphate which is also called as utp a nucleotide when three phosphate groups are added to uridine it also forms uridine diphosphate which is udp and uridine monophosphate which is ump depending upon that how many phosphate groups are going to add if we are adding two phosphate then diphosphate will be prepared if we are adding one phosphate group then we will get here the uridine monophosphate each one of the molecule is synthesized in the body and has their specific functions here you can see the structure of uridine 5 monophosphate this is the uracil part which makes bond with the pentose sugar it is a pentose sugar which is a ribose sugar and one phosphate group has been shown in this uh, structure so it is forming a uridine this is a uridine a nucleoside if phosphate group is not there then it is uridine and since phosphate is there it is a uridine 5 monophosphate moiety this uracil undergoes amide imidic acid tautomeric shift the amide tautomer is referred to as a lactam structure while the imidic acid tautomer is referred to the lictim structure this is the imide structure of uracil and this is the amide structure amide structure is known as lactam structure and imide is the lictim structure and this lactam structure is more common form of uracil which is generally present in the nature this degradation of uracil produces the substrate aspartate carbon dioxide and ammonia whereas oxidative degradation of uracil produces urea and malic acid in the presence of peroxide and ferric ions uracil readily undergoes the simple reactions including oxidation nitration and alkylation alkylation 
नाइट्रेशन एंड एल्काइलेशन टेक्स प्लेस एट द पोजिशन नंबर फाइव फॉर यूरेसिल सिंस इट इज द इलेक्ट्रॉन रिच पोजिशन ऑफ यूरेसिल यूरेसिल ऑल्सो रिएक्ट्स विद हेलोजेंस बिकॉज ऑफ द प्रेजेंस ऑफ मोर देन वन स्ट्रॉन्गली इलेक्ट्रॉन विड्रॉइंग ग्रुप्स इन द यूरेसिल वेन क्लोरिन रिएक्ट्स विद यूरेसिल वी विल गेट द फाइव सब्सटीट्यूटेड प्रोडक्ट विच इज द फाइव क्लोरो यूरेसिल देन कम्स द यूजेज ऑफ दिस यूरेसिल यूरेसिल कैन बी यूज फॉर ड्रग डिलीवरी एंड एज अ फार्मास्यूटिकल वेन फ्लोरिन रिएक्ट्स विद यूरेसिल वी विल गेट द फाइव क्लोरो यूरेसिल विच इज एन एंटी कैंसर ड्रग इट स्टॉप्स द ग्रोथ ऑफ कैंसर सेल्स दिस यूरेसिल इज ऑल्सो यूज इन द बॉडी टू हेल्प टू कैरी आउट द सिंथेसिस ऑफ मैनी एंजाइम्स नेसेसरी फॉर द सेल फंक्शनिंग थ्रू बॉन्डिंग विद राइबोजिस एंड द फोस्विटिस यूरेसिल सर्व्स एज एलोस्टेरिक रेगुलेटर एंड ऑल्सो को एंजाइम फॉर द रिएक्शन इन द ह्यूमन बॉडी एंड इन प्लांट्स ऑल्सो यूरिडीन डाई फोस्फेट ग्लूकोज इट रेगुलेट्स द कन्वर्जन ऑफ ग्लूकोज टू गलेक्टोज इन द लीवर एंड अदर टिश्यूज इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ कार्बोहाइड्रेट मेटाबोलिज्म यूरेसिल इज ऑल्सो इन्वॉल्व इन द बायोसिंथिस ऑफ मैनी पोलिसकेराइड्स एंड द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ शुगर्स कंटेनिंग एल्डिहाइड्स then comes the next important nucleobase which is again a pyrimidine derivative which is thiamine this thiamine is 5 methyl uracil so it can be prepared from uracil by its methylation it is the important four bases from the dna other ones are adenine cytosine and the guanine in case of dna within the dna molecule this thiamine base is located on one strand forms the hydrogen bonds with the adenine bases on the opposite strand so here the bonding is between the thiamine and the adenine molecule the sequence of the four dna bases and codes the cells genetic instructions that these nucleo bases are are present in which sequence will finally decide the genetic instruction of a particular gene thiamine base pairs with the adenine with the two hydrogen bond this is the hydrogen bonding between the thiamine and the adenine molecule thiamine also forms two hydrogen bonds with the adenine as that of uracil since it is only a methyl derivative of the uracil molecule here we have shown you the 2 deoxy thiamine which is a nucleoside in which this nucleo base it is adding to the sugar when only base nucleo base is there and sugar is there they are called as nucleosides and this is the 2 deoxythymidine here you can see that in this uh, sugar we are having one oxygen less on the second position of uh, uh, sugar so it is the deoxy ribose sugar and this is the structure of 2 deoxythymidine then comes the structure of nucleotide which contains phosphate group in addition to the nucleoside this is the nucleoside moiety and in addition to this nucleoside we are having a phosphate group in this molecule so it is a monophosphate which is called as deoxythymidine 5 monophosphate now comes the synthetic methods of thiamine it can also be prepared from fischer and roder synthesis as that of uracil we have taken here the methyl derivative of methyl acrylate ethyl acrylate here we are having methyl group in addition to the ethyl acrylate it will condense with the urea to form the cyclized product which is a methyl derivative of dihydrouracil will undergo reaction with bromide in acetic acid bromination will take place in the dihydropyrimidine ring which on boiling in the presence of pyrimidine here again hbr will go as a side product and aromatization will take place in the ring and we will get here the thiamidine nucleus this thiamine can also be prepared from wheeler and liddell synthesis in this method thiourea is condensed with sodium formyl propanoic ester here again we have taken one more methyl group in the synthesis which we have discussed in the uracil so we will get here the methyl in the dihydropyrimidine ring which on reaction with aqueous chloroacetic acid will give us a final product which is the thiamine 
Thiamine can also be prepared from Bergman's synthesis. In this method, here this urea is condensed with cyanopropanoic acid. Here we have taken the cyanoderivative of propanoic acid, which in the presence of acetic anhydride will first give a condensed product, which on reduction with hydrogen and platinum will give us a resultant product and that is called the thiamine. Here we are taking the platinum, so it is a catalytic reduction which will give us a final thiamine. Now comes the next uh, most important nucleobase which is called as cytosine. Cytosine is a pyrimidine derivative with a heterocyclic aromatic ring and two substituents attached. One of them is the amino group at position number 4 and one is a keto group at position number 2. So, it is a 4 amino 2 hydroxypyrimidine if we take the enol form of this uh, ox keto group then it will be a 2 hydroxy. So, it is a 4 amino 2 hydroxypyrimidine. This cytosine was discovered and named by Albert Kozel and Albert Newman in 1894 when it was first hydrolyzed from calf thymus tissues. This cytosine is also one of the nucleobase found in both DNA and RNA. It is also the hydrolytic product of nucleic acids. Now comes the properties of cytosine. Methylation of cytosine occurs at carbon number 5 since carbon number 5 is electron rich. This cytosine can also be methylated by an enzyme called, called DNA methyl transferase or it can be methylated or hydroxylated to make 5 hydroxy cytosine. Here methylation is taking place in the cytosine and we will get here the 5 methyl cytosine. On the basis of the spectroscopic studies of UV and NMR which is ultraviolet spectroscopy and nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, it is found that in aqueous solution of cytosine, the following two species are present. Although the main structure of cytosine is this one, the first structure, but if we take the aqueous solution of cytosine, then polarization will take place and we will get this second structure, which is shown by the spectroscopic studies. One of the most common spontaneous mutation of bases is the natural deamination of cytosine to uracil. Cytosine undergoes deamination, it means ammonia will go out to give us the uracil moiety. At any moment, a small but finite number of cytosine loses their amino group to make hydrocyl. When water, water is there in the presence of water, it will go as an ammonia side product and we will get here the uracil. So, because of this property, there is a uh, important uh, property of this cytosine on the basis of that mutation takes place in DNA. In DNA or RNA, cytosine is paired with guanine. However, it is inherently unstable and can change into uracil due to its spontaneous deamination. And because of this, it would lead to a much higher level of mutation during DNA transcription, during DNA replication because uracil is an unnatural base in DNA. DNA thiamine is there while our uracil is present in RNA. So, for DNA, uracil is an unnatural base and this DNA will polymerize and will recognize this uracil as a mistake the thiamine and you know that thiamine it binds with the adenine. So, instead of pairing it with the, uh, with the guanine, it will pair with the adenine. So, uh, the sequence of uh, nucleobase will disturb and mutation will take place in DNA replication in DNA transcription. Then comes the structure of cytidine which is again a nucleoside in which nucleobase is there and sugar moiety is there. When this nucleobase it is attached with a pentose sugar, here again we have taken the D ribose sugar, this is the ribose sugar and these will bind together to make a nucleoside which is called as cytidine. This is the structure of cytidine triphosphate which is a nucleotide. When this nucleoside it attaches with the phosphate groups, 
then it forms nucleotide which is called as the cytidine triphosphate in this case since three phosphate groups are attached to the cytidine YT. Cytidine diphosphate and cytidine monophosphate can also be prepared if we reduce the number of phosphate from this structure. If we uh, hydrolyze this phosphate and two will be there it will be diphosphate and if one is there then it will be cytidine monophosphate. This cytidine triphosphate it can act as a cofactor to enzymes and can transfer a phosphate to convert adenosine diphosphate to adenosine triphosphate. In case of adenosine triphosphate we are having two phosphate groups attached to the adenosine. This adenosine diphosphate can pick a phosphate group, group from the cytidine triphosphate and will convert into ATP which is adenosine triphosphate and by the removal of one phosphate from the CTP it will then convert into the CDP. So giving the phosphate group to the another nucleotide in this manner it acts as a cofactor to the enzymes in the uh, biological metabolism reactions. Now in the Watson and Crick base pairing cytosine base pairs with guanine with the three hydrogen bonds. This is the cytosine YT and this is the guanine YT. In the cytosine the oxo group the keto group of cytosine will make the hydrogen bonding with the amino group of guanine. Nitrogen will make the hydrogen bond with the imido group of the guanine and the amino group of cytosine will make the hydrogen bond with the oxo group of guanine since here three hydrogen bonds are formed in the cytosine and the guanine base pairing. So it will also stabilize the DNA molecule. Then comes the synthetic methods of cytosine. One of them is Wheeler and Johnson's method. In this method the starting materials are 5-ethyl isothiourea. It will react with sodioformyl acetic acid and will undergo condensation to give a cyclized product which on further reaction with phosphoryl chloride will undergo chlorination which on reaction with ammonia, ammonia group will substitute the chloro group and on reaction with hydrogen bromide it will give us the cytosine. Next method is Tarsio's method. Cytosine is obtained from melanone dialdehyde acetal by reaction with hydroxyl amine. This is the melanone dialdehyde acetal on reaction with hydroxylamine first it will form a five membered structure which is isooxazole in which oxygen and nitrogen two heteroatoms are present together. These on reaction with diethyl sulfate in the presence of a base will form beta ethoxy acrylonitrile. This on reaction with urea in the presence of a base will finally give us the cytosine YT. Now these purines and pyrimidines these are generally studied together since both are the bases obtained by the hydrolysis of nucleic acids. These nucleic acids are colorless solids having carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen and phosphorus the main elements and are made up of three units together. One of them is base which is purine and pyrimidine, one is sugar and one is the phosphoric acid. The nucleic acid are obtained by the hydrolysis of the nucleoprotein which is a class of conjugated proteins. The nucleic part in this conjugated proteins is the prosthetic group and the protein part consists of protamines and histones. In other words these protamines and histones are the basic compounds which form salts like compounds which can be called as nucleoproteins with the nucleic acids. Here you can see these are the nucleoproteins which on hydrolysis will give us a nucleic acid which on reaction with enzyme or with the ammonia will give us a nucleotide. These nucleotide can be divided into nucleosides on hydrolysis. Phosphate group will be left out here and we will get here the sugars and the bases and these are the main heterocyclic compounds which are purine, purines and the pyrimidines. Then comes the biologically active compounds with the pyrimidine nucleus. 
some sulfur drugs also contains pyrimidine deri uh, derivatives pyrimidine nucleus in them one of them is sulfur diazine sulfur pyrimidine and sulfur methazine these are the three sulfur drugs we have shown in which we are having the pyrimidine nucleus in them then several alkaloids also they also contains pyrimidine as we have discussed earlier also that caffeine xanthine and theobromine these are the purine derivatives which also contains the pyrimidine nucleus in them the last one is the folic acid in which we are having the pyridine ring system this is the pyridine ring system which further contains the pyrimidine in them and this is the structure of folic acid which contains this pyridine ring system so it is also having the pyridine nucleus in them so these pyridine and purine ring structures are present in many natural forms this was all about the pyrimidine properties and its derivative now comes few questions based on today's lecture that how these pyrimidines are prepared how these are linked with the uh, uh, uric acid with the xanthine molecule then the structure of pyrimidine derivatives what are nucleobases how base pairing is done in the nucleic acids and what are nucleosides and nucleotides and how the structures of these ba base pairings in the watson and crick model is done thank you Dear friends, on that note, we would like to thank Dr. Singhal for coming to our show and delivering this wonderful lecture. And thank you, dear friends, for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.